We're talking live with guests in New York and D.C. where world governments will be meeting at the U.N. this week. They will be attempting to fulfill an important promise of the Rio Plus 20 commitment. They will be the high seas is the biggest biosphere on the planet. Uh, essentially, it is everything beyond 200 nautical miles from the coast of various countries. And on land, which makes up about 29% uh, of the Earth's surface, more than 12% is protected as wilderness areas, as uh, natural parks. Within country waters, which are the areas that stretch from the coastline out to two nautical miles, the of that area is fully protected. And then, of course, there are the high seas, which make up about 43% of the surface of the Earth. And as you can see in the infographic, less than 1% of this area is fully protected. But the high seas are a particular portion of areas beyond national jurisdiction. The biodiversity in the ocean is, is valuable in and of itself. It's a heritage that we have. I mean, I think we have a responsibility because we have received this heritage to protect it. So that is, I, I guess, a global reason why there's a responsibility among all of us, among all states, to want to protect the oceans. The High Seas Alliance is a coalition that um, brings together 29 NGOs in the IUCN uh, to uh, work um, in collaboration for uh, the High Seas Biodiversity Agreement that hopefully we'll see um, soon. Uh, we um, have online campaigns and people are uh, able to join that and uh, send their messages to the government. For example, uh, we're asking people to go online and send their ocean resolution for this year, for 2015, and also ask governments to do their the bit, to do the right thing this year, and agree to launch negotiations for a high seas biodiversity agreement. And through the High Seas Alliance, we also have a campaign called the Wave of Change. People can join that hashtag, and hopefully thousands of people will be um, speaking to the governments and telling them what we want in terms of high seas protection, that they need to take the responsibility and stand on the right side of history in terms of protecting the high seas. So as a matter of politics, if, if one thinks about the last decade or, or two decades um, and uh, the involvement of developing states in various negotiations relating to environmental agreements, Two of the themes that have run through, I think, the positions of developing states have been, on the one hand, equity, and on the other hand, solidarity. And I, I think in terms of the issues that are being discussed in the context of this possible agreement, all of these issues revolve, I think, around these two um, themes of equity. The oceans provide protein to more than uh, th uh, three billion people and this, this is, these are just numbers to show how important uh, the oceans are to all of us and that often the, the price for the ocean crisis is not paid by those exploiting it but by millions and billions of people around the world uh, that depend on the oceans for their, for their lives. I'd like you to breathe in and breathe out and then breathe in and breathe out again. And that second breath and every second breath that all of us take comes from the ocean. So if we want air to breathe, uh, we need a healthy ocean. The oceans are our heritage, and I think there's a responsibility on all of us um, just by that reason alone, even if we didn't get the air that we so desperately need, for, just for that reason alone. I think that is a sufficient reason for us to care about what happens to the ocean hope that governments realize that the momentum and the, uh, the, the public demand for ocean protection is, is so strong out there and that they react to that. There have been many, many years of, of talks and now is really the time for action. Because while the majority of delegations are supportive of an implementing agreement, um, there is few but very powerful delegations that are opposed to the idea of an implementing agreement. The majority of countries, the majority of people around the world are in support of action to create very large, fully protected areas around the world to protect this common heritage. And we need to make our leaders understand how important our ocean is for us. This week, 
is a moment of decision to show that. And we hope that the countries of the UN will make the right decision uh, to move these discussions forward. You, you have to speak to your governments, write to your governments, uh, because ultimately I think governments will listen to their citizenry, particularly democratic governments. 2015 I think is the year that we will remember later on and say that was the year that uh, when the negotiations for this very, very important UN agreement for the health and productivity of the oceans were was launched. The next couple of days are key to starting a process and let's just emphasize this is the beginning of a process because once you launch negotiations the next part is to make sure that you negotiate in such a way that the treaty that comes out um, is in fact sufficiently robust to ensure that we meet the objectives. Um, so really my hope is that this week will be uh, the beginning of something really significant.